It's like me, you sort of go through things on YouTube and you see somebody and you haven't seen them for a long time, you know the sort of thing I mean. And then you sort of remember them, don't you? And then the next thing you do, you're looking through pictures and books and all sorts of things that remind you of these wonderful people that you've been lucky enough to meet. Uh, you know, it could be a loved one, it could be a famous person, anything, it's a memory, isn't it? And it triggers off all sorts of things in your head. Well, this particular picture, did that for me and I wanted to share it with you, our wonderful chums here on this community as ever, let me explain. Morning, good to see you, thank you so much as ever for your time today. It's true though, isn't it? Pictures, I think it's a strange thing actually. A picture is actually better, maybe it's just a generational thing, than a digital sort of platform because when you're holding the picture, you can see things and you look at it and think, oh yeah, I remember that well. This picture here was one of the very first times that I was lucky enough to meet and become friends with the brilliant comedian uh, Joan Rivers. And this picture was taken as we were both leaving, I think it was the ITV building, which is now no longer there. That's how old these things become, right? And we were both appearing on a sort of daytime TV show thing, and I'd become a host on there, and she was the guest. Absolutely delightful, lovely, lovely woman. And we instantly clicked, you know, she didn't need to be friends with me. I'm a nobody and all that sort of stuff, but she was very kind, very sweet and just, you know, engaging. And she said, look, you know, let's go and have a coffee. So what you see is both of us leaving to go and have a cup of coffee and continue our conversation. Now, Joan, as I say, became a good friend and she, when she stayed over here in London, stayed at the beautiful Ritz Hotel in the very heart of Piccadilly. And as she pointed, out. She worked hard. Why shouldn't she stay there? And I kind of agree with that. You know, she had put all the graft in and she enjoyed the luxuries of life. As she said, she spent many a night in her car as she was grafting to become a comedian. You know what it's like. But what she did was not just the kindness of her, but what she actually did was introduce me to so many different people. And over the years, as I say, we became friends and, you know, she was very supportive of all the sort of things that she did. She tried to bring a play over to Leicester Square, a sort of semi-autobiographical play, which sort of part worked and part didn't, but she was savvy enough to know that it didn't work. Her big problem, you know, Joan, was she wanted to be an actress. That was the thing. She wanted, like everybody who's funny, to be taken seriously. But she introduced me to one lady who wasn't taken seriously, who made a phenomenal career, Phyllis Diller. Now, Phyllis Diller was not what you'd imagine at all. You know, I realise there's a comedy persona and there's a real persona, right? But the thing with Phyllis, you expected the spiky hair, the cigarette holder, the moon boots, everything. She was the chicest lady, you know, truly, very, very, uh, you know, attired in all the latest couture, just was glamorous off camera. But of course, the persona that she put on camera was that of Fang and the terrible thing. She was so ugly. She was this, she was that. I love the joke about how she said she'd left a, a bathroom window open and she was terrified because a peeping Tom kept peeping through in the neighborhood and she could hear him climbing the stairs. Eventually, the hand went through and he pulled the blind down and went back down the stairs. Yes. It's just a clever joke and that's exactly what Phyllis Diller was, a very clever comedian, as was Joan Rivers. And I often said it's a strange thing, isn't it, that say all of them, maybe Carol Burnett, all the other leading lights in the sort of comedy world, didn't team up and do one great show together. But as Joan pointed out, can you imagine the rivalry backstage? She did have a point, of course. But Phyllis Diller, as I say, like so many people, lives on, all thanks to the digital platforms that we now all watch every single day. Years ago, when somebody passed away, sadly, you didn't see them like you and me do today. And the reason why I highlight Phyllis Diller is, like Joan, you know, sadly, she's now left us, but a comedy does live on. And it's a shame if we don't go and revisit it, remember exactly how they packed out houses in Las Vegas, London, around the world, and made everybody laugh. Because after all, the world needs laughter, as they often say, more than ever. But I believe that's always been the case. And Joan Rivers said that if she didn't leave the stage, hearing people clapping and wanting more, then it wasn't a job well done. And Phyllis Stiller and Joan Rivers were truly pioneers in the world of female comedy. Did you ever see them? Did you like them? And who made you laugh if it wasn't, too, if it wasn't these two delectable ladies? As ever, do like and share and let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoy these memories that I share with you and as I say, it's always a pleasure. Neil Sean in the very heart of Yorkshire.